Hello, I'm Audible editor Rachel Sherry, and with me here today at Audible is Cody Keplinger, an amazing author and just all around talented human being. You may know her as the author of uh, The Dump, which was made into a major motion picture. Um, she's also the author of several other uh, YA novels, including That's Not What Happened, which came out uh, just this year in August. Welcome to Audible. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad that you're here. So, of course, since we are here at Audible, I'm going to ask you a pretty easy first question. I've heard that audiobooks are near and dear to your heart. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Oh, yeah, definitely. I, because I am visually impaired, I, uh, I was born legally blind, I actually used to hate books. I hated reading when I was a kid, and in large part because it was really difficult for me um, visually. And then when I was, I guess, about nine or ten, um, my mom started reading the Harry Potter books out loud to me to try to get me into reading again. And I got so invested that she couldn't keep up with reading them out loud to me. So we had to start buying the, the audiobooks and, um, that Jim Dale narrates. And they just completely blew my mind. And I fell in love with reading again. And I listen to, I listen to audiobooks pretty much all the time now. Like that is my primary source of reading. Occasionally I will read something visually um, with, you know, like assistive technology or something. But 90% of my reading is audiobooks. Well, thank you for sharing that. And I think so many of our listeners would probably have the same experience of having listened to Harry Potter first. And I know you mentioned Jim Dale. So um, what do you think? does make a really good narrator or a good uh, audio performance? Oh my gosh, that's a great question. The thing is, audio performances I think are really, really crucial. I think you can, I've listened to books before that I fell in love with and then realized later, I'm like, I wonder if I would have liked that book as much if I had read it visually. And I didn't know if I would actually, because a really good narrator can completely, completely alter our reading experience. The best audio books for me are when I listen to them and it doesn't feel it doesn't feel stilted, it doesn't feel like someone is reading, it feels like the character is speaking directly to me. So, as an author, what is it like hearing your books narrated? It's really awesome. Um, it's a really cool experience because, you know, sometimes the narrator uh, that gets matched doesn't sound exactly like the character did in my head, but they might end up kind of swaying me in the direction of being like, no, I can, I can picture this, this is actually, this is good. I get, I get so used to it that it feels like this feels right. And then other times they match the character in my head, the voice of the character in my head so perfectly, it's surreal. Um, a good example of this is one of my books, A Midsummer's Nightmare. Uh, I had picked the narrator for that one. I had specifically requested Renata Friedman because I'd heard her read other books. And I, the character in that book, Whitley, has just such a specific voice to me. And this was the only voice that I felt made sense. She just had this really good, she was really good at doing the kind of exasperated, apathetic teenager voice, <laughs> and it, but like still giving it a, like emotion. Listening to it, I was like, yes, this is this is Whitley. This yeah. is exactly how she's supposed to sound, and that was such a neat experience to get to hear this voice that I'd had in my head for so long that was so specific, actually be actually be vocalized in a way that made me go, yeah, that is that is how I heard it in my head. This is exactly right. Speaking of emotional performances, and certainly all of your novels are emotional and have really complex and great characters, I know your latest novel, That's Not What Happened, um, it has themes of, you know, a school shooting, um, it is not an easy subject to broach, but in your own words, could you talk about what it's about and what kind of inspired you to write this novel? Of course. Um, That's Not What Happened is... A book set three years after a school shooting um, in which a group of survivors, uh, the six people who witnessed the shooting, speak up about the events of that day and some of the misconceptions that surround the events of that day um, and essentially start trying to reclaim the narrative. And especially with how the media covers the mass shooting as opposed to how survivors then talk about it later. And I thought that that was an angle I hadn't really seen written about in fiction much. And it, it became one that really, really haunted me. It really kind of made me feel like I was, um, I was complacent in something that I didn't like. I, I was a part of the problem in that I bought into the news coverage. I believed some of the myths that had been spread. I bought into the sensationalism. And it made me, it made me feel bad. It made me feel like I need to explore this part of reality in a way that 
you know, I understand, and the way I understand how to explore things is through writing. Lee is a really interesting character. Um, in addition to her telling her story about her best friend passing away and surviving a tragedy, there's also this really just emotional part in the novel where she explains how close she was to her friend Sarah who had passed away and she describes the experience of coming out to her friend Sarah as asexual mm -hmm. um, and being on the a spectrum and I wanted to hear from you you know why was it important for you to include this this detail in this novel and um, just in your words and um, for people who might not know what the a spectrum is if you could explain what that is. I think we oftentimes think of sexuality as like along kind of like a Kinsey scale sort of sort of sort of thing where it starts like you can either be you know straight or bisexual or gay like you're somewhere on that on that just like straight line but I always try to explain that there's also a, like, a vertical line intersecting with that. I think a lot of times when people hear the word asexual, they assume that that means that someone has no interest in sex whatsoever or is repulsed by it. And I'm like, actually, it is a spectrum, just like with, just like with um, like a sexual attraction. And we don't talk about that a lot. We don't talk about that spectrum a lot, that there's, there's a lot of in-between. In the case of Lee, um, she is romantically attracted to someone. Um, she's romantically attracted to one of the other survivors who is a good friend of hers. She struggles with the fact that she's, like despite this, she is on the asexuality spectrum. She is probably what would be classified as gray asexual, um, meaning that she's not opposed to a physical relationship at some point in the future, but it, she's just not, she doesn't perceive it in the same way I think that some other people would. Like she, it's something that she doesn't know when she'll be ready for. It's something that she's never had necessarily a strong desire for. It was important to me because I am, I'm a queer woman, I'm a disabled woman, and I always wanted more characters that felt like they related to me, but not necessarily in a story that was about being queer or about being disabled. Um, so in this story, there's a couple of disabled characters, including one who is blind, which I am. Uh, and there's a character who is a lesbian, which I am, I am predominantly interested in women. And there's, of course, one who is asexual. And I consider myself to be somewhere on that spectrum as well. Straight, white, able-bodied people aren't the only people who are victims of these sort of tragedies by any stretch of the imagination. And it just made sense that if we have this group of six teenagers, they're gonna be different from each other. And it felt, it just felt right to put, put some of, some parts of me and my own identity into these various characters in the book. Um, thank you so much, Cody, for coming into Audible today. It's been such a pleasure speaking with you and learning all about your, you know, nerdiness and your writing and uh, your latest novel, uh, That's Not What Happened. Uh, for those of you who are watching or listening at home, Download That's Not What Happened, download all of Cody's books. Uh, she's a fantastic writer and all of them are available on Audible. Uh, you can listen anywhere. I highly recommend that you do that today. Thank you so much and thank you for having me. Thank you.